Hello, I am Dr. Bornavo, consultant anesthesiologist. Today we are going to be discussed about uh, BLS or BCLS. Now, what is basic? Basic means it can be done by anyone. It is done mainly outside the hospital. Now, before going into the details, uh, what is BCLS? That is, uh, first we have to check about scene safety and universal precaution. What is scene safety? Suppose uh, a accident occurred or you have found a drowning man or woman. So, you have to keep the person safe. Like Suppose the patient is emerged half in the water, half in the land. So, you have to keep in the safe place. Next is universal precaution that is uh, suppose blood is there. Okay. So, the rescue safety is first. So, first rescue safety then safety of the patient or person. Now, how to start? There are three important components of one's life that is uh, airway, breathing and circulation. So, first we check the consciousness, then we check the respiration, then we check the circulation. So, uh, so let's, let us assume a scenario. Uh, you are walking in a park and you see suddenly a person just in front of you collapsed. So, what is your response? First, you check the scene safety, then assess for consciousness. How you will do it? You just tap the person on his shoulder. Hello sir, are you okay? Madam, are you okay? Just tapping the shoulder, not vigorous shaking. If he responds, that's well. If not, then we will go to the second step. We call for help. This is a very important step. As you are alone or maybe one or two percent, you can't continue with the uh, CPR for the very long time. So, you need help. So, before doing anything or assessment, if a patient is unconscious, first we do call for help. How will do it? Normally, in US there is a dedicated number 911, but in uh, India there is one number is in process that is 108 or you can call nearby hospital or ambulance anywhere for if you know the number. And you have to inform certain facts. What? In what is the place? Second, how many victims are there? And third, what has happened? And fourth, you have to ask them to get a AED. What is AED? I will come to the later. Suppose you called and said that uh, one person called us, please come here quickly and discard the phone. What will happen? You can't understand where where are you? So, it is very important to mention these four things I have already mentioned. So, after this we will assess for breathing and circulation. How we check breathing? We see the chest rise and along with seeing the breath, uh, checking the uh, breathing, we will check the carotid pulse. Only the carotid pulse is filled in case of adults. No other pulse have to be checked for the a cardiac arrest scenario or your unconscious patient. Now, how to check cardiac pulse? Normally, it is kept in, it can be checked on right or left side of the uh, patient's neck. No uh, side preference is there. You have to check for five, minimum 5 seconds. How will calculate 5 seconds? Because normally, we do not have that time to check the our watches. So, you have to count 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. What is 1001? It can be assumed 1001. The time taking to utter it, utter it is 1 second. So, the, we calculate uh, by this method 5 seconds. Normally, it is recommended that we check the breathing and circulation, mainly the carotid pulse, minimum 5, maximum 10 seconds. Now, in this scenario, there is three possibilities there. Number 1, Breathing and pulse both is present. What we will do in that case? In that case, we will keep the patient or person in the recovery position and we assess the person in every 2 minutes and wait for the help. Number 2, breath, breathing is absent but pulse is there. In this case, we will uh, give res rescue uh, breathing to the patient, normally one breathing in each 5 second and we will continue. And every, after every 2 minutes, we will again recheck for the pulse. 
if it is present or it is absent again. And uh, last one is when both is absent. This is the cardiac arrest scenario where we have to start the high quality CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Normally it has two parts that is chest compression and breathing. Chest compression is given is and both are given in 30 to 2 cycle that means 30 chest compression followed by 2 breathing. This thing 5 times. So, I mean 32, 32, 32, 32, 32 and this whole this is called a whole cycle. It will take 2 minutes for this and uh, there are some criteria for giving uh, chest compression. The rate should be 100 to 120 per minute. The depth should be in adult 5 centimeter or more than 5 centimeter and we have to allow complete chest recoil will minimal interaction. Now when complete the 2 mid cycle we again reassess the patient for the circulation. If circulation is absent we will again resume CPR. If it is present then we will again check for the breathing and if it is not absent we will give rescue breathing. Now I already mentioned AED. What is AED? Automated external defibrillator. It is made for the layman. Actually this machine analyzes our heart's rhythm and tell us that whether to give shock or it is it, the rhythm is shockable or not shockable. In case of shockable rhythm we have to give shock using the defibrillator that is AED. If not we have to continue the CPR. Uh, I must say this is the most important thing in this chapter because the most of the cardiac arrest uh, outside the outside of our hospital setup. Uh, it is due to the cardiac cause and uh, actually there are four rhythm for cardiac arrest. Number one is ventricular fibrillation, second is pulseless ventricular tachycardia, these two. For these two we need to give shock and shock is the only treatment there. And other two is asystole and PEA or pulseless electrical activity. In, in these two cases shock is not effective. So, when a helping person came with AED, actually in uh, malls or railway stations or airports, it is attached in the public area. So, any lay person can use it. When it came to you, you have there are two uh, pad is there. One have to be attached in just uh, with your right clavicle. Second is in the apex, heart apex. During the attachment, you have to continue the CPR because patient's heart is not beating. It means brain is devoid of the blood supply. If we continue doing CPR, the brain is getting oxygenated. Normally, a brain can survive after 3 to 5 minutes of complete hypoxia or lack of oxygen. So, our aim of CPR is to supply oxygen to the our brain and to keep the brain functioning. If the brain is functioning, then other organs will keep doing function. So, so uh, when we attach the pad, we should continue CPR and when the machine says analyze the rhythm, we all clear of the patient or person and, patient, and then the machine will uh, speak loudly that it is a shockable or non shockable rhythm. For shockable we have to click yes or for non shockable we have to uh, again resume your chest compression for every uh, 2 minute cycle. I forgot to mention that breathing is also there. So normally 2 breathing is given between uh, 30, cycle, 30 chest compressions it is given for around 3 seconds. And one question is that till how much time we have to continue CPR? There is no clear cut guideline on this because uh, in hospital setup it is seen that if the cause is known, we can revive the patient even after 2 or 3 hours of continuous CPR when cause is known. Normally it is followed that uh, CPR should be continued till the higher or advanced team came or there is a sure sign of death uh, above that you can continue the CPR. Next is advanced 
ACLS, Advanced Cardiopulmonary Life Support. Here it is done in the hospital setup and there is a role of ECG findings, role of drugs, and etc. is there. But it is for the medical persons only. That's all. Right.